welcome to this week's episode of the We'll Make a Fan Out of You podcast. This is the podcast where we talk about the wrestling world. Our aim is to make you a fan of us while we talk about the greatest entertainment on this planet. I'm Aaron Newsom, and he is Natesh T. Dog Sharma. Bonjour. This week, we're actually going to start looking at TNA, branching out Woo. in the world. Thank you for all the feedback we've had so far. Listen to us wherever you get your podcasts from, or our YouTube channel, We'll Make a Fan Out of You. We've also got some new videos up on the YouTube channel where we've talked about the Rhea Ripley injury, AW predictions for Dynasty. So if you haven't popped, popped in on that yet, give it a look. Some of Natasha's best thumbnails and work there. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, and I guess I'll do the socials as usual. Don't forget, you can follow us on at make fan of you on Instagram, TikTok and X. And if you do want to watch this podcast in video format, just like what Aaron said, head over to our YouTube channel. We'll make a fan out of you. Don't forget, you can hit the subscribe button and the notification bell whenever we post videos. We're staying consistent. We've got some nice little YouTube videos in the pipeline and going to continue with the podcast. We love your feedback. We are new at this. We are. It's a learning game. We want our community to basically reach out to us and let us know where we're going wrong. Let us know what you want us to talk about. If you want to join in on the podcast, we'll have you on as a guest. We're an open book. And yeah, as Aaron said, we're going into TNA. When did you first start watching TNA? This morning at half ten. <laughs> no, I've seen clips and I've seen some older matches and stuff. With some, when you go back and go, oh, some of Joe's matches on YouTube, click on it as a TNA match or AJ Styles, somebody like that. I've never actually consistently watched it. Yeah, this is the first like, pay-per-view I've watched like the morning after. Never done that before for TNA, so it was quite an exciting experience to do that. It was in Vegas. I was in Vegas. Said in Vegas. The Palms. The Palms, yeah. yeah. It's where the last one was as well, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm guessing that's where they'll do majority of their pay-per-views, even okay. though they announced Slammiversary in Montreal on this show as well. It was under siege, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know where they're doing that, though. I don't know, May 4th or something that came up. Yeah, I when I was younger, everyone was getting Sky TV. We were a bit late to the party when we got Sky TV, but they had a channel called the Wrestling Channel, yep. Channel Four Two Seven. I don't know why I remember that, but it's just engraved in my head. You don't. And that's yeah. where I as you remember for channels. Yeah, and then that's where I first got introduced to TNA, and they had like all of the clips, and then they were recent. They were. A few weeks behind where America was, but I'd always try and keep up with it. And yeah, you got the OGs like AJ Styles, Samoa Joe's, Christopher Daniels, America's Most Wanted, Kurt Angle, Jeff Hardy. The list goes on and on. But yeah, it was their six sided ring. It was fresh to me. It was, it looked so cool back in the day. And it was just really fun to watch. Like I say, it was the original alternative to WWE once, obviously, WCW closed. Yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah. I would have seen some bits and pieces because I remember the wrestling channel as well. But yeah. as I said, I, I wouldn't have known at the time it was TNA. But yeah, we start this one. Bit of a pre-show. There's about an hour of pre-show, I think there was. Yeah, I was surprised they actually managed to do like a pre-show yeah. with three matches. I didn't really look at the card for the, at this. I knew a couple of the matches that popped up on X or Twitter for people who don't call it X. So I didn't know the, the pre-show. I didn't know there was three matches in it. I was a bit surprised at that. But it started off quite well, didn't it? Match one was the Rascals versus ABC and Leon Slater. Yeah, I've not seen much of all of them. I know of ABC because of TikTok. I'm a big Chris Bay fan and I do like my Bullet Club as well, which they are a part of. They are a good tag team. And I think TNA showcased their tag team division really i know it was a six-man tag match but they like showcase teamwork and yeah all that sort of jazz yeah i got that feeling from not just this but all the tag matches throughout the night but this is what i like to see from tag teams tag matches it worked really well it was a good fast-paced opener got got the crowd pumped um a lot of flippy flips yeah and there's some crazy flips in there yeah yeah i the one move that I saw, what the Rascals did, which was be really cool, 
was they did the triple drop kick, but the person in the middle they like flipped over yeah, yeah, into they, a drop kick. Yeah, so the two on the outside were like supporting him, and yeah, he does like a whole a full like three sixty into a into kick. a drop yeah. kick. Yeah, yeah, and cool. I was like, wow, uh, that was like that was a really good like tag team move, like some synchronized swimming stuff. Yeah, it was, yeah. Or like a swan dance, but yeah. a drop kick. <laughs> yeah. I really liked the over the turnbuckle they did. I thought that was really good. They did two, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. They, the Rascals did one, and then Leon Slater did yeah. one straight after. And both of them, they got so much air. And, cause, so I was sat there with my breakfast eating, <laughs> watching this, and then I'm meeting, and I'm just like, God, it's tight around the ring. And then all of a sudden, that's, that's the next thing they're doing. I'm like, whoa, okay. Yeah. This is what I'm in for tonight, this yeah. morning. But yeah, it was good. I enjoyed it, and was it Leon Slater did like a crazy 450 for the win? It looked like a swanton bomb, but then he turned it into a 450 splash. Yeah, that was really cool as well. Yeah, like how good do you have to be to like get some good hang time and also turn into a 450 splash? It's just unreal. Yeah, it was definitely a really highlight, like a really good highlight for Leon Slater the whole match. Yeah. All of them look good. ABC, I thought, were a bit short changed from some of it. I feel yeah, because like Chris Bay is from Vegas as well, which oh, okay. the commentator said he should have got a bit more action. Yeah. Obviously, he did his rolling cutters and yeah. they have a bit of tandem offense. But yeah, you're right. I feel like they didn't get showcased as much as they should have been. Yeah. But no, that was, that was a good start. And then it goes to match two was Crazy Steve versus Laredo Kid. Is that how you say it? Yep. Yeah. I've heard of Laredo Kid. I've not. I've heard of Crazy Steve. I've not seen anything. I hadn't heard of either of them. Of them. I really Crazy Steve's mask he come out wearing. It did look cool. That's yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. And then yeah, Laredo Kid comes out in his lucha outfit. I like the mask. It was hard to tell quite what the back bit was at first. Then he turned his head. And was like, oh, okay. He's got like yeah. the thin bits. That was cool. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a very short match. I thought a lot of Lucha, Libre. Yeah. Lucha. Some flips. Crazy Steve got... He tried to take the mask off Laredo Kid a few times. And it was for the Digital Media Championship. Yeah. Yeah. So they've got bouts on bouts. Got more bouts than AEW. Yeah. That's saying something. Yeah, it is. But yeah, no, the original Digital Media Champion forever will be Zack Ryder. Yeah. With his internet champion. I thought that was something he made up, but apparently it continues and lives on. Yeah, no, it was made up when he was trying to get over in the WWE and he was like the first trendsetter. Yeah, I know, but it's just like, it's risen like a phoenix. Yeah, so we get Laredo Kid as the new digital media champion. Yeah, and we... that We're going to argue now, aren't we? Yeah, so we actually haven't really talked much about this pay-per-view before we've seen it, because as you can probably tell if you watch the video, I'm drinking a cup of tea, this is the morning. Or after <laughs> it, you can normally tell when we record because either I've got a beer and a water bottle, or I have a tea, or a cup bottle. of tea. Yeah, yeah. So this, yeah, we've literally, I think, sent a few emojis to each other, and then I asked what that, what the move at the end of this match was, and you thought it was a Spanish fly. I was just calling it a super belly to belly. I might be yeah, wrong. Yeah, I, I thought I thought it was a Spanish fly. Like he flipped him over like a Spanish fly would from the top rope. Yeah, and yeah, Laredo Kid, new digital media champion. It's so hard to say that. It is. That's yeah. why I didn't say it when I was introducing the match. I'm glad you picked up the slack. It's okay. I'm here for yeah. that. Match three, then. Spitfire versus Decay. One of the things I've got right with TNA, I'm going to say this now. I like how the graphics come up before a match, but they put the stable names or the tag team names up, but then don't tell you who's in it. For someone mm-hmm. first time watching, I was really struggling to learn who. Yeah, who. I, I still don't know who Spitfire is. Let me let me like Google who it is. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll try and say it now, but I'll probably get it wrong. There was because uh, I know Decay was Rosemary and the other person Spitfire. Somebody was called Havoc. I remember that Havoc and uh, Rosemary. Yeah, who the hell is Spitfire? Come on, Natesh. Gonna have to do an editing cut in a minute if you're gonna flail about. No, no, I got it, I got it, I got it. It was, it was um, good though. The teamwork was on display. Yeah, the teamwork was really good. Um, from all four in this, it, uh, this one wasn't too long either. Obviously, end of the pre-show, 
Yeah. Got to find them out of time. I, they're doing better than WWE already, showcasing women's De- tag team. Definitely the women's tag, yeah. Yeah. I feel like... Sorry, yeah. sorry to interrupt you, but Jody Threat and Danny Luna. Okay, yeah. I, I they, Yeah, it doesn't ring a bell, so I couldn't No, it no, doesn't ring a bell for me as well. So, yeah, but... TNA, can you please just put underneath the uh, stable names just who they are as well? Would yeah. Be very helpful for... Yeah, that, that would we be We could have nice done some work beforehand, but that's where's the fun in that. I'll learn on the Yeah, track. exactly. We're going to talk about this whilst it's raw and engraved in our brains. Yeah. There was a weird face-off in the middle of the match between two people, which just went on for a bit too long. Was so I was going on mm-hmm. here. It yeah, didn't make sense. But no, it was good. It was some good. And now come. I think the double power bomb was on havoc. It was on havoc. Yeah, that's how they won. But they they must be really strong because they got her into a double power bomb position from the turnbuckle, walked to the center yeah. of the ring with havoc, and then just slammed her. Yeah, although on one one of the pair who were doing it, their leg started to buckle up a bit quickly. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. could tell. Yeah, you could tell that, that was a hard move to pull off. Yeah. It was good. It was good. And they're still TNA Knockouts Women's Tag Team Champions. Yeah. God, they need to... <laughs> it's like them in the indispute. Actually, in other news, WWE have shortened the name of that title now. Yeah, finally. Yeah. It's not the Uwu Championship anymore. No, it's, it's just the U Championship. Yeah, yeah. the Woo. Oh, yeah, we'll get there. And there was also a top rope move that I thought took far too long to set up, and like, it was the catch to the outside. Yeah, yeah, And, yeah, it took a eternity to pull off, but the match was fun to watch. Mm. And then the pre-show ends with some weird in-ring protest against Jake something, was it? or No, it wasn't Jake something. It was... I was put my plate out at this point, come back in, and they were in the I ring. can't remember who it was, but he's like... He's quite big in TNA, but yeah, no, that I'll skip over that bit because that was just so pointless. To... It was weird. Yeah. But then yeah, the main show starts. Shout out to the cool man on the guitar doing the national anthem. Yeah, that was cool. You can tell that was cool. Know the, one of the aesthetics TNA is kind of the rock and roll vibe and all that, and I do appreciate yeah. it. And that was a very cool beginning. I did like that. Such a cool guitar as well. Yeah. It's very Slash inspired. Yeah, with the bits that were coming mm-hmm. off. It was, yeah, that was really good. Yeah. So yeah, we uh, you get the opening little montage that they do, which is just basically t- different TNA members walking down the strip. Do they do this every time? I, I want to go back to Vegas. I've been before. It's so much I've fun. I've never been and I want to go. We will. We'll, we'll plan it. to go. Yeah. Fans, if you want to start a GoFundus. We're going to do a Patreon just for us to get to uh, Vegas. Over to Vegas, yeah. Yeah. And maybe buy a portable camera. We'll take some pictures for you. <laughs> we have to line it up with wrestling event, either a TNA or maybe future WrestleMania if the Undertakers let it slip, or whoever else would go out there. So yeah, it's cool. It looks cool. I'd, the arena looked really cool as well, actually. The inside of it. Yeah, the layout is really nice. One thing that TNA do well is they fill out the smaller arenas. Yeah, and it looks cool. It looks yes, it's an indie it's company. Got, got the indie they're... feel, yeah. Yeah, but they're really good at what they do. Yeah. And they start off the show quite hot with the X Division Championship match. Yeah. See, this is how you, this is how you name a belt. Yeah. That's their cruiserweight division. Oh, well, well, hang X on. Div- there's no weight class with the X Division. Yeah. Anyone can fight anybody. You ain't, True. You ain't peddling this Mustafa Ali propaganda on our podcast. <laughs> if he wants to do that, he can come on here himself. And speak about it, yeah. Yeah, his entrance was cool. Yeah, yeah, he's that. He's not been defeated in eight in months eight around months. the world on planet yeah. Earth, as we were told. On planet Earth, yeah, that was a good line. He's getting a good show in. He was quite hard done by when he was in WWE, and it's so nice to see because he is a really good wrestler. Yeah, this is why it's so good that there's three to four promotions now around the world you can go to and make a name for yourself. Exactly. When people were floundering after leaving WWE, it was horrible. But now people like Nick Nemeth, Mustafa Ali, they can go out there and they can showcase. Because every time you saw Mustafa Ali, or we'll say it's Dolph Ziggler, because I'm talking about WWE at the minute, when you saw them on camera, they were great. They just Mm -hmm. never used enough, or there was too much people in the locker room to constantly give them a push and a showcase. Yeah, exactly. Which is why 
companies release people after a while, give them a fresh start. And Mus mm-hmm. Valley's had a great like Yeah, it's, it's coming up to a year and yeah. he's having a great year. Yeah, so he is. Far. Yeah. And, and like the it, whole like, it shows it well. The Goldberg like inspired entrance. I know there's yeah. the whole bit with the car first, but he's surrounded by goons. I also want to say I love the fact that the goons stayed at ringside. Just stood there like Secret Service, whatever they're called. Yeah. For the whole Yeah, because he's like the president. Yeah. Of, yeah. It, it, it's good. What What did you think of the ring having all of the sponsors? I've seen bits and pieces of TNA before. So I'm like the colourful TNA in the middle has never bothered me. Yeah. I know it could be quite jarring to some people if you don't watch it a lot. Yeah. There's a bit too, yeah, there's a bit too much on the map. But if after I think this match, I don't really notice it. Yeah, um, I, 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 yeah, I see what you mean. At first, you go, "Oh yeah," I think that's how you used to tell the difference between promotions when I was younger. It wouldn't be, "Oh, I'm watching WWE and watching WCW." I'm watching the one with the sponsors, one without sponsors, kind of thing. Yeah, or the blue mat. Yeah, or the hexagon, WCW hexagon yeah. ring. Yeah, and now you've got the purple ropes. I didn't know TNA have had purple ropes for a while. I know now, but I've never really noticed it until now. Watching, going, "Oh yeah, the ropes." I, are I like it. I like it. They're a bit harder to see. Do you reckon? Yeah, when you're... I thought red was always hard to see. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm used to looking out for red. Seeing the far side of the ring is a bit harder. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. so the it's Mustafa Ali versus Jake something. I do, I've never And heard yes, of, that's his name. <laughs> I've never heard of him, but I like him. Yeah, <laughs> just like his last name, something. That's yeah, brilliant. And I thought he was really, really good in this. He's good. I Notable things I saw was... Mustafa Ali doing his little roll into the ring and then but then doing a neck breaker. Yeah. And then Jake something rolls out of the ring and then he does it again yeah. onto the ramp and it looked really cool. Yeah. Shout out to the poor camera crew who got hit with the lights as well. <laughs> it happens again later in the night, but <laughs> Yeah. They don't look... Like you said, it's a small yeah. setting. And because they have that I like that raised ramp as well. I've always liked that about TNA when I've seen that. But AEW used to do it all the time. How did they? Yeah. Why'd they stop? No. Just when they started going into different arenas and stuff like that. Should've and Adam it. Cole broke his foot last time there was a raised oh, arena, right. so, yeah. yeah. But I like it here. Hopefully no one breaks that foot. No. No. <laughs> but yeah, no, the, no, the match was, they had a nice little pace to it. Yeah. You, they, you, you could play- as an X Division match, you didn't really see many... Flippy flips yeah. is what I would like to see myself, but it's different. Yeah, the German suplex from turnbuckle to the apron, that looked nasty. That was good. It did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it did. And then the goons come out and hold Jake something. Yeah, so one of the was... goons distracts the ref and the others, yeah, hold, throw him back in the ring or something and try yeah. to set up the, yeah, the 450. Joe something kicks out. That made him look strong. I like that. Yeah. And then yeah. Ali shows his wily ways with his getting his foot on the rope. And rolling up as well. It was yeah. a roll up pin. Yeah. But I was shocked to see that. I thought Ali would have won, not clean, but. I, yeah, I suppose he didn't want to make Jake something look really weak. Would have done here because he's the bigger bloke. Then they show how Musfali is going to win by any means. So make, Any means necessary yeah. to keep his undefeated streak. And it didn't make him look weak by cheating but we could no. have done it made him look like a better heel yeah if anything yeah yeah uh, what would exactly. what if you had to rate the match from outside of the ring bottom rope middle rope or top rope what would you give it what about on the map there's the map there as well that doesn't that say on the map or so what are we doing outside of the ring do on the map bottom rope we don't make up them in Ranking system here now, right on camera. Outside the ring, uh, on the mat, bottom rope, I'd say. I'd give it a bottom rope as well. I weren't like, I'm not against the match. I would like to see a bit more from it, maybe. And yeah, it was. So I yeah. suppose that's a good good point. It's not, I felt like it was miss. It, it was missing something, but it wasn't like that word. But we don't it know down. what yeah. it was missing. You don't know what it needed, right? Yeah. 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 And I feel like that's a, that was a, Bit of an issue throughout the whole night, really. Something was missing, and you could tell that they were missing Scott Diamore, I think. Yeah. Yeah, you could tell that maybe there's a bit... It's a bit hard when you've not seen it week in, week out. Yeah. And 
So when I'm watching wrestling, like it's probably 60, 65% of it is watching WWE. Then there's a chunk for AEW, which is probably, I don't know, another 30%. And then the rest of it is everything else. New Japan. It's like clips for you. Yeah, yeah, TNA. I don't really know any of the story going on, apart from the whole President Mustafa Ali kind of secret service. The whole n- n- Nemeths in the oh, That's hard for me to say. Dolph Ziggler's yeah. in the company. You really can't say wrestlers' names, can you? It depends. If they're allis- alliterative, it's a bit harder for me, especially when I'm like on the go. Yeah. yeah okay. It was good. I enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah. No, I, I enjoyed it. And then match two was. Let me get my notes up. Ah, uh, I. Yeah. Right. I mean, I'm a Hendry maniac. Yeah, I've got I Hendry love Joe Mania. Hendry. We believe in yeah. Joe Hendry. Clap. My issue, but, right? My I'm God. just going to go straight away. Joe Hendry for the past, don't know, four weeks has been everywhere. Twitter, mm-hmm. X, Instagram, TikTok. He's been everywhere. He's so over, not just on TNA, but around the wrestling community. You don't even yeah. know who he is. And you still heard his song and you're still singing it. I've paid 89p or whatever it was to buy the damn song because... In the UK, where he's released it, it takes 4,000 boys to get it in the top 100. So the uh, BBC radio have to play it. So I was like, yeah, damn right. You can have 89 Yeah, we want that, on, yeah, yeah. We want that um, on the radio. And then for this match to go this way, I can imagine there's going to be a lot of disappointed people. Yeah. If I weren't doing a podcast, so I was watching the, in higher, the entire event, I probably would have tried to look at this match. And then I very quickly had turned it off. Because you would have been so pissed off. It's the way the it went. That, Not so yeah. much the, the fact that Joe Hendry loses. Joe Hendry could lose it. That's fine. So it's Joe Hendry v. Rich Swan. Rick Swan. Yes. Rich. People, fans, you might remember him from the Cruiserweight division in WWE. But, yeah, it, he was also a former world champion in TNA as well. Okay. Until Kenny Omega beat him. Yes, um, I heard that line, actually, about Omega. I went, okay. Yeah, but... Yeah, like, I've been a Joe Hendry fan since we saw him as a heel in Coventry yep. at a show. And I started the Joe Hendry, Hendry as a wanker chant, which yeah. I will always remember. Because he looked at me and was like, you're a son of a gun. Yeah. yeah. It was cool. But yeah, no lacking. So the start of it was really good because you got the Joe Hendry promo. Yeah. And we all believe. They show off, is he an NFL? Shane Nerriman? U.S. fans, nice you'll to have see, to nice forgive to see, us. Uh, the, you know, they show the celebrity and all that. Good. We don't know who he is. Sorry. No. Um, no. Don't know who he is. Yeah. No flop dollar from his shitty dive that he did in WWE as top dollar. And Michael Cole just took the mick out of him forever since then. Yeah. He's okay. He's a very... You could hate him forever i think and joe hendry's entrance is funny because it looks like they use the ai yeah it's not um, paste, built, uh, yeah 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 like, it was cool it was really yeah cool. Um, and you got like aj francis doing the guitar and i got the clap in the right place my missus looked at me like i was learning tech she's heard it now for weeks on tiktok and was, yeah it's like what is it and i've shown her it's a bit like the whole grado madonna thing she doesn't quite get that and i've shown her that on, when it's come up on tiktok quite a few times or you, yeah. And she's I don't get it. I went, it's just brilliant. It's good because wrestling fans are some of the best fans in the world. Best singers and in the world. Best singers in the world. The UK fan base is brilliant because you'll just get a load of drunk men singing Madonna. Madonna. No, you or, won't get that anywhere else. No, you won't get that anywhere else at all. And you'll get it, yeah, with Joe, Joe Hendry as well. Yeah. Like Joe Hendry cuts a promo before the match starts going. Oh, they've they've all come down with a case of Hendry mania. Yeah, I was like, yes, that is brilliant. Yeah, it's that really is fantastic. Cool. It is. Yeah, and that's the highlight of the match because then he very quickly goes into Rich Swan. Right, surely going for an oh, he's a straight DQ. No, part of your body. What? No. Remember, we've got we've come through this with Bianca Belair using her hair. Yeah, you can't just finger poke using their in teeth. The eye. There's got to mm. be a rule here. The referee in the TNA is wrong. <laughs> You it should was, be the referee. I should definitely be a referee. I'd be like Stone Cold being a special guest referee. Everyone's getting stunners. Well, yeah. Sure, Michaels. Everyone's getting a super kick. Yeah. But yeah. So very quickly went from Joe Hendry looking like he was gonna. Yeah. Or don't 50-50. Rich one. Don't Rich one put 
Joe Hendry's face into the corner of the steel steps. Yeah, but straight away, yeah. pretty much. I mm. think Joe Hendry does like a press, overhead press, yeah. drops him on the mat. They go outside the ring and then I mean, straight away, it's, yeah. let's beat up Joe Hendry. This is where yeah, it goes then, wrong because you can have that's the issue. these shenanigans. You can have Joe Hendry lose, but don't make him look like such a weak competitor. It's because it's... they're trying, they'll probably make him into the meme guy. Yes, he is a walking meme because he's done this for so long. If you see some of his clips, he makes great songs about his opponents. Yeah. And he's the meme guy, but he is a really good wrestler as yeah, well. It's, yeah. And. Yeah, it's very short changed, I thought. Yeah. Um, if they're going to have yeah. him lose straight away, kind of thing, just have it be a DQ and have, they're having beat him down. You don't need to yeah. go through this, whatever it was, five, six minutes of him just getting tortured and poked in the eye. And yeah, it, what, it felt like it was really short as well. Yeah. And then they do the whole interference leading to him lose with the NFL guy. We yeah, because like, the NFL star looked like he was going to. But uh, Rich Swan and AJ Francis. It's the the weirdest double fake out interference thing I've seen in a very long time. It made sense, no, but no, it didn't make sense. It was predictable. That's the word. It was so predictable. Yeah, you could. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I don't know. You could see it from a mile away, and then Joe Hendry loses. Yeah, there's not really much for us to say. I was no. impressed. No, and then at the end, do we bring it up? Because it's strange. Yeah, I'll bring it. So earlier on in like the kickoff, AJ Francis had his whole entourage, and I believe they're all rappers. And there's like a female singer rapper there, and then she comes out and then decides to do the splits on Joe Hendry and give him like a twerking lap dance. It's like a, it's weird. It's, I, it's what she does for the entirety of time she's in the ring. She just twerks. Yeah. But then she's like, <laughs> yeah, all she's the time. like, I've been yeah. asked to do this, but I don't want my face to be seen. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it was strange. I didn't yeah, quite But the less it. we talk about that, the better. It made no sense. Yeah. So I... then we go on to possibly my, I, we haven't actually talked about what our favorite matches are, but this is probably my favorite match. I thought this was one of my favorite matches as well. Went, yeah. I, these guys are TNA originals. You have yeah. to, for, can't forget that. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've heard of both of them before. I can't say Frankie's surname. Kazarian? Kazarian. Okay. I could have been better hmm. read it if it was just put in front of me. And Eric Young. I take it's the end of their feud? I'd probably say so, yeah. The, I thought the video package was a bit inconsistent as well between each match. I don't know if we'll This just... video package was probably the best one yeah. of the whole night. So I some think. of them are a bit like wishy washy with what actually yeah. has happened in the past. I don't know if I'm just so used to the WWE style of it that I'm like, I know what's happening when. Their videos come out. I'm like, okay, yeah, cool. I can see that. Yeah, I know what I'm doing for this match. I know who mm -hmm. this one was, and I suppose well, there's not quite a straight or bad bad guy, good guy in this. It's just two people want to beat the living hell out of each other. The bad guy is Frankie, but yeah, yeah you're right. They were former tag partners. Frankie got jealous that Eric Young had a world title shot, and yeah. then he cost him that world title shot. Yeah, this is the what was it the 18th full Metal Mayhem match in TNA. Yeah. History. The things I can remember from Full Metal Mayhem was just Abyss. Always. Yeah. I don't think you'll probably heard of Abyss, have you? Yeah, heard? I've seen a couple of clips. I'm sure yeah. you show me that I've heard of Full Metal Mayhem ma match before and I haven't seen much of them. Yeah. But I remember you sending me clips. Maybe fans if you want us to do a reacts to some old school TNA. Yeah. And a YouTube um, let us know. I will also just say I really didn't like the fact that they both walked under the ladder to get into the ring. Like that is it's bad, bad luck. Bad juju, man. It's bad, bad luck. Juju. Yeah. Bad juju. Although I did really like Eric's TN TMNT Casey mask. Is that what you'd call it? Yeah. It's like the hockey mask that he wears in TMNT, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It's really cool. He's in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? No, Casey is. Oh. Casey's a character. Like... He wears a hockey mask. Okay. Looks yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, now I get you. I was like, Eric Young was in TMNT? I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't say no if he does turn up in it. Yeah, true, yeah. true. Uh, it starts off like full metal-y, doesn't it? Oh, <laughs> it's a great fast start. He hasn't yeah. even got in the ring and he's hitting with a mask. And then yeah. doing the baseball slide under the ropes and doing all the bits you want. Yeah, he gets the table set up, the ladder's already in play. Yeah. And yeah, it was fun. It wasn't as hard cool as i would see it but that's because i'm more of a hardcore 
wrestling fan. So it's not hardcore enough. There's no skewers involved. Is that what you're telling me? There's no skewers. There's no barbed wire. There was nails on there's... a in a bar. Yeah, that was abyss. Wait. That was abyss's old weapon. Yeah. So it was a nice little homage, 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 homage. homage. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was good. good. I enjoyed it. I thought there was just a good level of violence, to be fair. You weren't yeah, like sticking okay. over the top. I've yeah. thought about this more as well since the, we haven't done a revolution episode yet, but we both talked about revolution and the whole grass spot. I, I do like it to be a fact that I'd be comfortable to sit there with a younger cousin or when I have children and watch 90% of what I'm seeing in wrestling. So I'd like to be able to go, you know what, this is probably on the verge of I'd show a 10 or 12 year old maybe this, as long as they're under the understanding of <laughs> do not try this at home. Do not try this at home. Yeah. yeah. The, the whole PG 13 um, guidelines. I know TNA is not PG 13. I don't know. There'd be certain bits you wouldn't want to show. Maybe probably not the thumbtack bit that we get to. But no. I really Would you this. show your kid this match? Yeah, I think so. Like when they're throwing ladders in the face? Yeah, I really like that. The eating the ladder into the face. That was great. Yeah. That was the, See, I, the egg I'm the opposite. as well. Yeah, yeah. You it just was want, the big You just ladder. want it to be 18 R rated all the time, don't you? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. No, I'd, I'd show my kid all hardcore matches. I'd show him like old school Japanese death matches yeah, and stuff like that. Kids, like. That's why when he has kids, they'd be taken away from it. No, don't say that. <laughs> they'd do it in nursery to somebody. Yeah. I, I got to watch wrestling and I turned out okay. Just about. Now doing a podcast about wrestling. Know, friends with me. No, I, the way to describe this is fun, like hardcore. I really like it. The fact that they get like was, baking trays out and yeah, it's oh the baking tray hockey fight that was yeah. fantastic. They all had a baking tray each, and they were just yeah. yeeting each other on the head with it. Yeah. yeah, I also like the fact that so they get the plank out with all the nails in. They said that this is like homage bit. I really like the fact that in my head I was like, can you imagine if someone in that arena wasn't a wrestling fan? Like staff wise, and they watch them bring that in, and they're like, "Oh my god, what is what, this? What, yeah, what is this? Yeah, it's good. It was yeah. I I thought it was really fun. You got to see once again another homage to an old TNA veteran in Christian Cage with the unprettier on the ladder. Yeah, a spear through the table, which looked really cool. Frankie does a suicide. Yeah, idea. Eric Young had liked in the whole roll up and over the rope. In the, the turnbuckle, we got threw into it, and then yeah, he spears him. That was cool. I did like. Yeah, that. loves table spots, don't they? Yeah, everyone likes a table. Yeah, probably more than ladders. To be fair, there's just something satisfying about going through a table. There's something about going through a table, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't love yeah. a bin. They use a bin as well. Yes. Then Eric Young put it over. Frankie. Yeah, then like just some elbow yeah. drops on it. There's quite actually there was head chops as well, which I'm not used to seeing these days. Yeah. Which, yeah, now that's... With they, the whole CTE yeah, sort of concussion Yeah, they don't concussion do it, but I suppose protocol. they did it with... Did they do it with the being and I think they did it with a bacon tray? Yeah, the bacon tray was just like a fight. It, yeah. A hockey fight over the head, but with a bacon tray. Like, yeah. And it did just obviously, look, bacon trays aren't that hard anyways, but no. it just looks lethal, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. They like battle to that from the floor up while hitting each other mm-hmm. over the head with them, which is great. Yeah, it's just really fun to watch. And then they start punching each other with the yeah. bacon trays as well. Yeah, and, and t- then it takes some skill because all it takes is a slight wrong angle when you're cutting somebody with one of them. Yeah, and we'll talk about that because towards the end of the match, yeah. my God, my... So they set the table up in... I it's a, It was the wrong way around. The wrong angle. It was yeah. the wrong way around. So it was like facing from corner to corner. It's the best way to say it. Then he goes up to do, I can't, it's flux capacitor, is it called? Flux capacitor, yeah. It's like a T bony suplex yeah, kind of thing. Which I couldn't quite tell what was happening because I was more worried about where that had his head hit the table. So they didn't go into the center of the table. They actually missed the table. And then it, he. It hit, looked horrible. Eric hits his head on the corner. Corner. Corner to the temple as well, near enough. Yeah. So it looked like Eric Young didn't get fully elevated enough yeah so then when frankie kazarian slammed him down eric's young head was like on the armpit so it looked like he could have easily broke his neck as well yeah yeah it weren't it didn't look good 
it didn't look good at all. Nasty but then hell. he was bust open straight away from it as well. Yeah, yeah like, he oh. was. And it's like the, where the table breaks, it doesn't break in the middle, it breaks on like the side. It breaks on the corner. Yeah. And then you also, he probably got bust open from like the metal bit, you know, on like you when you lift the table up, you have all of that. Yeah. And then, yeah, that's just wild. Apart from that, yeah, I'd probably agree. It's uh, one of my match of the nights. Yeah, I think it was my match of the night, which is weird for me to not, uh, say because normally the hardcore matches aren't my match of the night. But this was a fun one. Yeah. I enjoyed that. Um, it was good. And then, was it the, now we have the special interruption match that happens? Let me... Yes, it was a special was, match. Steve Macklin comes out. I've seen clips of him. I I wouldn't say I I know him, but he's an old champion. He's well liked in TNA. Yeah. He comes out with his TNA contract and he wants to sign it in front of everyone. But then he wants a match, and then who else but Santino Marella comes out. Yeah, who is the authority figure, which yes. I did not know until this yeah. moment. Uh, until... I, I love Santino. Marella. Some of his kids. He even mentions Son of a Gun as yeah. well. You are one tough son of a gun. Oh, that, what yeah. a legend. And then he announces a second person that's just signed with TNA. And it turns out to be the old LAX member in TNA, Mike Santana. Yeah, I like Mike Santana. I've, I do I've too. Seen, I've seen interviews with him because he's done quite a bit of interviewing as well in the last few months since he's left yeah. AEW. And it was, it was good to see him, to be fair. Mm-hmm. He looked in good shape. He looked like he was having fun when he got in. Yeah, and he it... looks like he wants to be there and like, yeah, wants to wrestle. I think it's his ho- kind of a home, away from home, isn't it, for him? Yeah, he, him and Ortiz did make their name yeah. really big in TNA when they used to face the Lucha Brothers and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, it was good to see. It was a nice short little match, bit of a surprise for the fans. They really popped for it in the arena. Yes, yeah, and I thought it was a really good reset match after the last one, because obviously you've just had all that carnage, you've had all of that, and it's like it was a kind of you're on a high, let's yeah. bring it down to a mid, right? Yeah, yeah, don't go straight into. I think after this is the tag titles. If you mm-hmm. go through that, no one's going to remember the tag title match. If you do this though, it keeps the momentum without tanking everybody in the energy. Yeah, al- although it's a memorable moment, it calms the crowd down a bit. And could have been a pee break match. Uh, after yeah. the whole Santana comes out. Yeah, once you realise, you know, you, I suppose you don't know how long it's going to go on for. It weren't long. Yeah, it, it wasn't long. Standard. Santana does his flip, which then looks like he kicks someone in the face. Oh, in the crowd. Yeah, the, I thought yeah, I saw yeah. that as well. Yeah. That's what you get when you've got the really small barriers. Yeah, that definitely. Right no, and that's what you pay for. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. pay for that kind of carnage. Yeah. I'm sure somebody checked on if he yeah, was actually hit and if they're okay. They will get a signed t-shirt out of it. Yeah, and uh, the fan, if you are listening to this podcast, let us know if you did get story? hit in the face. Do you want to tell, tell your story? <laughs> we'll do an interview with you. Yeah. But yeah, no, Mike Santana gets his win uh, with his finisher called Spin the Block. Yeah, it looked good. It was a fun match, I would say. Yeah, it's and he keeps, probably the, all... keeps the crowd engaged. Yeah. But it was really weird. I started to notice at this point, like behind where the camera's fa- the main camera's facing, like hard mm-hmm. When you're looking at that portion of the crowd, there's always gaps in the crowd. And people walking past, like they've gone to the toilet to get a beer or... It's yeah. a very strange kind of... Because normally, pay-per-view, you don't quite see that because there's so many people. But because there's only five rows, a bit it's of a It's more balcony, noticeable. Yeah, it was very noticeable. Yeah. And that was distracted me a few times. It's just a weird I quirk. think it's the red seats because I have that every time when there's a football match at Wembley. Yeah. People, Might, yeah, possibly, or yeah. a wrestling event at Wembley. Yeah, like when they're not was. a new, neutral colour, it's easier to yeah. spot. Yeah. Because um, as I complain all the time, wrestling t-shirts are 90% black. Give mm-hmm. me some colour variety in there. That's got a bit of colour, this wrestling, better than you, baby. Yeah, but it's still on a black t-shirt. Where's the option it to is. get that on a grey or a blue? Give me colour options on websites, people. <laughs> please. Yeah, please. Please. Yeah. I've put... I've bought, Six T-shirts. I didn't want two of them, but two of my colours were bought. <laughs> then today I've got a Dragon Ball Z T-shirt because I don't have a TNA T-shirt. Shout out to Dragon Ball Z. Yep. The wrestling and anime world. I'm actually surprised. This is a bit of a tangent. There's not a better wrestling anime out there. 
For me, it was Ultimate Muscle. That yeah. was fantastic. But then you have got Tiger Mask as well, which is like a New Japan Pro Wrestling. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like I've show. always wanted a yeah, like a sports anime around wrestling. That, if you do get a chance, watch a bit of Tiger Mask. Yeah, I've seen Because I've got again, it on Crunchyroll. Is it on Crunchyroll? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll yeah, check, check it's on Crunchy. So, yeah. af- so after the surprise match with Mike Santana, we go into the tag match, tag titles, TNA yes. World Tag Titles. Nice, simple name. God, nice, it. simple name. Keep it. Yeah. Keep the X Division, the tag titles, and the World Championship the same. The rest of them, shorten them, please. The knockout one's quite good. You can keep that yeah. one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, keep that as yeah. well. So this is Bri- Brian Myers and Eddie Edwards. The, yeah. sis- the system the system be Speedball Mountain, isn't it? Yes, and Speedball Mountain consists of Trent Seven, yeah. fellow UK native, and Mike Bailey. Yeah. Who, if you do get to see some clips of a match, watch Mike Bailey versus Will Ospreay. Okay. Where's that, New Japan? A TNA. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. It was very good. I'll have to check it out, but not right yeah. now, because right now we have a tag match to talk about. Hell um, yeah. It was a bit of chaos this match, wasn't it? It was a lot of chaos, yeah. We had no control all night. No. No, definitely not. Matches. Um, by the f- uh, yeah. Are you saying you'd do a better job? Oh, definitely. I told you I'd be super kicking and stunnering people. Let me yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, no one listened to the poor woman referee in this match. There was tag after tag, and then there was people after people just jumping in. Yeah, and... Once again, showcasing tag team division yeah, in TNA is very good. Fun. There was a lot of double team moves, yeah. which I thought was cool. There was Trent Seven being flipped over onto Eddie Edwards from Mike Bailey, which Trent Seven is a bit of a big dude. Yeah. So yeah, it takes a see. lot. Yeah. But for me, just I don't know why and... Trent Seven, I do apologise if I do tag you in this, but you look like Gandalf and Dumbledore. <laughs> With the, the, like, grey hair. Yeah, and the beard. I thought it looked cool. It does look cool, he does look cool, but you do look like Gandalf and Dumbledore. Look, it's better than having long black hair like 90% of wrestlers and just putting a bucket of water on it. And me. Get the wet hair look. Yeah, I still have nightmares from the early... 2010s, whenever it was, when WWE had 90% of the roster like that. Yes, yeah, that is true. What do you think to Brian Myers? Do you remember him? A little bit. I did. I like this. There were, I didn't feel like there's a great deal to talk about in this match. No. It was good. It was, yeah, as you said, showcase a tag team talent. It was your bug standard tag team match, wasn't it? Yeah. Where you get the hot tag, you get Mike Bailey being the hot tag guy and then doing some flippy flips. Yeah. Doing like a missile drop kick and then taking out Eddie Edwards. And then the heels, the bad guys once again take control of the match and all that sort of jazz. You get to see Trent Seven doing a little bit of a another homage to Tyler Bate and Pete Dunn yeah. from British Strong Style, where Trent Seven does the bop and the bang. He also then tries to go for the bitter end as well, which got countered. If you saw that. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was just, I think, because of how much how chaotic it was. Nothing really stood out. Uh, Shooting Star Press yeah. was the thing that comes to mind. Okay, that yeah. Was... I like the what Mike Bailey does where someone was on his all fours and then Mike Bailey, I think it was a Shooting Star Press, but onto his knees. Yeah. I really like the Brian Myers and Eddie Edwards tag move that they did where I think it was Trent, he was in one corner, Eddie Edwards runs, slams him whilst Brian Myers is in the air doing an elbow drop. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're like, uh, they're, I can't remember what I think it was their finish. Yeah, it's yeah. their finish and they yeah, kicked yeah. out. Yeah, that was good. I did enjoy yeah, that. that. I was a the, very it was good the double submissions teams. as well. That just yeah. made me happy. So, yes. Yeah, double su- we love double submissions in tag teams. Double submissions, uh, double pins, it's great. Yeah, and then somehow Mike Bailey just, Gets out of the submission from Bayern Myers. Yeah, it wasn't very clear. S- starts kicking Eddie Edwards. Oh, th- and Eddie that bit Edwards made me, like, no. This bit makes yeah. me laugh. So he's in the Boston Crab, and Eddie Edwards is very close to getting him to tap. And it just takes Mike Bailey so long to like kick him out of it. 
Yeah. And then he decides to do a flurry of kicks. Yeah. Why didn't he start with yeah. that? Yeah. 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 He was good. He did a... He moons, moonsaults to the outside, comes back in, yes. and then does like some weird... Spin super kick. kick into a tiger. Yeah, it was a spin kick into like a, a tiger. Spin kick. Super, was, that, was, yeah. that was really cool. Yeah. And was, yeah, I agree. That was like... I feel like that should have been the end. Yeah. And then they, but they still go... The, but yeah, they go, this is the bit where Brian, where Eddie Edwards does that finisher. Yeah. Where he's, yeah, it's just, it was so smooth, that, that whatever, that double team moves called. The, the only thing I did feel like is, was it meant to be timed a little bit more where, as he falls backwards, he starts to take him over? Or is it, he does the... I think it over. worked because Brian Myers was already in the air, yeah. ready for impact. Yeah, true. Onto it, which was nice. And then you get Trent Seven doing a breaking of a finger. And then yeah, you get towards the to end of the match, don't we? Yeah, you get the... Uh, is it a spear in midair for the win? Yes. That was cool. Yeah. Yeah. And he, it's Mike Bailey. He's quite good. As I said, if you do get a chance yeah. to watch some of his highlight reel, I think you'd be a fan of him. Yeah, from what I've seen, all, all four of them are really good in this. And I've seen clips mm-hmm. of a few of them before. Mike Bailey, not so much. And I enjoyed, I did enjoy this match. As you said, it's a bit, it was fairly stereotypical tag match. Yeah. But it worked yeah. well. But yeah, there was this spear in midair outside the ring to stop. Like, Mike Bailey, yeah, because yeah, Mike Bailey goes for a dive onto Brian Myers and then Brian Myers hits him with a spear. Yeah. He was a former edgehead. <laughs> and then, yeah, Eddie Edwards gets the pin. Probably the best spear wins. of the night. Yeah. Definitely. Are you sure? Because Moose has some. Oh, I good didn't spears. like that spear. We'll get to that. Do you not? No, that was very no. flat. That ending, but we'll get to that. Bit. Uh, we'll get to that bit. Yeah. And then what match are we on now? The next. Josh match? Alexander and Hammerstone. Hammerstone, the last man standing match. Yeah, I haven't seen one of these in a while. Yeah. It's good to see. And once again, I thought it would be a bit more hardcore just before we get into the match. Does it have to be uber hardcore? No, it doesn't. No, definitely. I like the video package for this one where they're like explaining how he stole the headgear and it's his trophy. Yeah. I like that bit. Yeah. Uh, the, Josh Alexander's known as the walking weapon then. Yes. Which, okay, fair enough. And Hammerstone is basically a beast. Yeah, huge beast. I don't, didn't really know either of these. I feel like I've seen Hammerstone in clips before. Yeah, he's been around in like yeah. the indie circuit. So is Josh Alexander, really. Once yeah. again, if you do get a chance to watch another TNA match, Will Ospreay versus Josh Alexander. Yeah, I feel like watching this for me is this pay-per-view making me tune in next week to TNA. It's not, I'm afraid. No. I enjoyed watching it, but it's not going to make me watch uh, Impact. But... Would you watch their pay-per-views, though? Yeah. After uh, watching yeah, well, this pay-per-view? I'll con- continue tuning into the pay-per-views because I did like the majority of what I saw. But uh, what I will say is like, those tag matches, the... Um, Metal match, this last one Sunday match, makes me want to see more of all these people involved. Yeah. You want to see more of the wrestlers rather yeah. than the show, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm definitely going to be looking out for clips with these wrestlers in more. Yes. Especially definitely. unlike my YouTube crawl when I go through. If I'm not tuning into Raw Tuesday morning, what I'll do is I'll look for the clips of Raw. But WWE are very good at putting their packages out of here's the highlights you need to see. Yeah. I'll do a bit more of, oh, TNA highlights are out. Let's have a look at, oh, yeah, Josh Alexander's in a clip. I'm going to click on that one. Beforehand, mm-hmm. I might, might have just just seen his name on there, been like, yeah, okay, I don't need to see that one. Oh, the next clip's Jordan Grace. Yeah, I'm going to see that because I like Jordan Grace. Um, yeah. Especially, yeah, yeah. That, that's how the like, that Royal Rumble spot worked in TNA's favour. Now when I see something come up with Jordan Grace and I'm like... Oh, she was in the Royal yeah. Rumble. I know and then is. Yeah. every bit of scenes make me like her more and more. So that's where TNA are going to get my attention, really, with this is, mm-hmm. okay, I've enjoyed the, this last man standing match, Josh Alexander versus Hammerstone. Next week's clip of Hammerstone doing whatever he does, I'm going to watch. Yeah, okay. And this I was, see what you it, Yeah, this was a good kind of old schoolish match as well. Yeah, that Hammerstone gets his moment to shine. He gets his bad guy work on. Alexander, once again, it's a last man standing match. So whenever the person gets a move taken on them, the referee starts counting to 10. Yes. And just Alexander has a lot of near to 10 counts. Majority yeah, did... of the counts were near to 10, weren't they? 
yeah, uh, I was keeping track of a few of them. So it's an eight count. Um, there's an eight count, a couple of nine counts. It does a couple of the smaller counts as well, but yeah, they're just brushed off. Yeah. But yeah, this it was a bit of a brutal match for Josh like Alexander. Hammerstone really worked on him. Really, didn't he? Yeah. The, it was Josh Alexander doing a German suplex on the apron to Hammerstone. The, ha- the but, half and half. like Oh no, he does yeah. like a belly to belly one, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. It There's doesn't like actually, really it brings out all the suplexes one. now, think of it. There's a German, there's a belly to belly, there's a half and half. Yeah. It's good to this see. This is the suplex match, yeah. yeah. It was nice to see. One notable thing I saw was that headgear, Hammerstone smashing into Josh Alexander, and then he busts his ear open. Yeah, so behind his ear, well, yeah, it gets cut open, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, when he hits him, and they commentate, I think, saying that the reason he wears it is to do with... Because of that the injury ear. that he's got from Which, an ear, yeah. That's good storytelling. I don't know how it, like, true it is, as in, is it still affecting him that much, or is it just a good cut he got? It'll probably just be a part of his ring attire now. It probably makes him look cooler, doesn't it? Yeah, it was noticeable, and it was the kind of story beat for this match, which was cool. Yeah. You get shades of Bret Hart to Stone Cold Steve Austin, where yeah. on the ring apron, Josh Alexander does a figure of four to Hammerstone. And I like that. That's kind yeah. of where it starts to turn a little bit in Josh's favour, the match. Yeah. Not major, like Hammerstone still giving a beat down, but it's a bit more of a 50-50. Mm-hmm. I also we feel like see... he feels he forgets to sell that yeah. leg injury at one point. He yeah. does, it, does it first, then doesn't, and then gets to work again. And he, oh, yeah, well, I'm meant to be. I'm meant but to remember, be. you got to think, right? Wrestlers are going a million miles per hour. Oh, no. But he paces back and forth in the ring with no yeah. leg whatsoever. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. It made me smile. Yeah. I was just like, oh, okay, I spotted this here. But yeah, he uses the headgear. There's a boot to the skull of the ring post as well, which was nasty looking. Yeah, which was like the side of his ear, wasn't it? Yeah, that looks. Yeah, so after weird. he's bleeding and cut open, he like positions him, and yeah, it's like a running on the apron, isn't he? Yeah, it was good. Yeah, the way that he did it was funny because he'd roll him over, hit him. Yeah, roll him over, hit him, roll him over, hit him. Yeah, roll just... him over. Then he's in the position of the ring post. You like to see it instead of just like, yeah. dragging him. Yeah, into position. Yeah, and then yeah. I think that's the, is that the nine count. I think that's the nine count. Yes. It? Yeah. Which was good. Which, if I was just Alexandra, I would have not gone into the ring to stand up. I would have just slid myself out of the ring to be Oh, yeah. He yeah, almost doesn't make it up because he's got to get yeah. out from under the turnbuckle. Which... Or was he that concussed from being kicked? Yeah, it's good. And then there's, what do you call it? Is it torture rack or something? A torture rack. Yeah. That that's was... a classic move. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was good. I don't know mm-hmm. if they renamed it recently or... If he calls it something no. in particular, no, it's no, still no. a torture rack. <laughs> and then, yeah, and then he goes back to working his leg again, doesn't he? He yes. manages to counter. Wow, he gets beat yeah. up a bit more in counters and gets him into an ankle lock, working that leg again. And then, again. yeah, there wasn't much noticeable apart from that. And then they end up getting thumbtacks. I, was gonna, I just thought of you when this happened. I was like, Natesh is happy at this point. I was, yeah, because at this point I was like, there's no weapons used, there's no tables, there's no chairs. It's a bit of a standard match, isn't it? Yeah, it was like a wrestling match, but the aim of it was to knock him out for 10 seconds. Yeah. Which is fine, not a problem. But maybe the hardcore fan in me is, I want a little bit more. See, I just enjoyed it. it. Yeah, no, I did enjoy it. This, this is, a, I think, a very close second favourite match for me. Yeah. Um, both of them come out looking really good. Uh, yeah, I, feel I agree. All the spots got hit that they needed to. Nothing felt flat. No. The thumb tap bit was well executed as well because they were It was while. good. Do you, I, it, they called it a pendulum and it just looked like Nightmare Josh Alexander is a big guy. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously Hammerstone is strong, but he lifts him up into a suplex position. Yeah. And then just ends up. Instead of going backwards like a normal suplex, he just like puts him to his front and then just slams him down onto thumbtacks. Yeah, I wonder how <laughs> who who one who brings up we're going to use thumbtacks and two how do they decide? Do they play rock paper scissors? To yeah, see who's gonna them? who's gonna be the the scapegoat yeah. in this? Yeah, yeah. I thought yeah. Um, if they fault the customer Gary, Josh is taking this bump purely because he's got the the ringlet on the singlet yeah, on because yeah. yeah. he's got that on. He's got to be taking this because the other fellas bare yeah. backed and yeah. they say Randy Orton and Mick Foley. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. 
But yeah, yeah, no, it's just so, so strong, looking. wasn't he? Yeah, he like holds him up and then yeah, swings him down and then just slams does him the jump up. as he jumps. Yeah, yeah. no, that was a really cool spot. And then yeah, they take it to the ramp. Yes, which first of all, that not the red pendulum is another nine count, isn't it? Yes, that was the nine count. And then you see Hammerstone like ripping out thumbtacks on his thigh. Yeah, yeah, which makes you wince every time. Yeah, he... yeah. Yeah, it was a hell of a lot of thumbtacks as well in one pile. They always do it, yeah. yeah and they get thumbtacks. It's always in the millions, isn't it? Yeah, and then I'd probably not say a million, but yeah. yeah. And obviously, it's going to take on a couple of pairs of pliers and two blokes backstage to, to take it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, then they take it to the ramp, and this is getting towards the end of the match, right? Yeah. So he uses he gets goes get the headgear and a hammerstone, and that's what. Loses him the match. That was his downfall. Yeah, he uses it and beats him up, and arguably that could have been another nine count. Yeah. I don't know. He doesn't let the referee count, does he? He just carries No, on. he stops him, and then, yeah, yeah. that's the... So... He does... Is it C4 spike he called? Big commentator's call? It? That's his finisher, yeah. It's a C4 spike. Basically, it's a Tiger Driver, is what I would call yeah, it. it is, but yeah, Tiger Driver. It is a good move. And on the ramp, it must hurt, because, yeah, you get him into a double, lift him up, and then yeah, pile so driver. Yeah, start with pedigree and your pile drive from there. Yeah. I feel like there should have been another near fall at some point for Hammerstone. Do you reckon? Yeah. No, because he should be the bad guy that was... Yeah, maybe not. ...in charge of the whole match. I, I, would, have li- I would have liked at least one near fall in the ring to sell that he's as beat up as he seems yeah end. okay yeah i see what I, you I mean i know that obviously they want to make that c4 spike look really strong and it did look really strong and he did yeah. the way uh he did a bit of a suplex didn't he just before yeah it. half and half so again. he's like really put him through the ringer at the end yeah but yeah because he or hammerstone just needs to be out flat it gets yes. up and starts to crawl up yeah and it's is that deserved as much just from that those two moves, from that maybe bit, not. Yeah. If he was just out flat from that, sounds a C4 spike more to me. That sounds the spike, than it? That's how he's won. But yeah, mm-hmm. I enjoyed that. That was good. It was a good and match, And then you yeah. get some weird little promo thing for somebody that I don't know. Is that Jonathan Gresham? That's Jonathan Gresham. Oh, okay. Old Ring of Honor champion. He was in AEW for a bit and then went into TNA. Yeah, and he's turned into some demon character. or Yeah. Dark-sided. Yeah. yeah. He cops like, up oil. Like black goo. Yeah. 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 So. Or he's a squid. <laughs> he's a squid man. Yeah. He's a Cthulhu. So, mm-hmm. yeah, he's doing. Maybe he's joining the White family. Who knows? Has this been yeah. a gimmick for him before? I've never. I, I was really... I've, no, I've never seen it. It's something new okay. to me. As well, well. That... I might have to look, do some research into it. It makes me want to see. Again, that hooked me for that character. It's like, oh, I want to see where that goes. Yeah. That's yeah. the kind of. That, that's the kind of mid-event teaser you want to put out. Yes, so yeah, go, definitely. So, oh, it's almost like the pretty deadly one from WrestleMania was a bit pointless. For us, we know who they are, we know they're funny. Mm-hmm. I suppose it engages some people who might not know who they are and doesn't watch yeah. properly. But this one, the kind of one, oh, okay. I want to understand it, yeah. I yeah. want to know a little bit more and about And it's not as long, the pretty deadly one, I felt like, it goes on a bit too long. It went on for too long. No, that was like an advert about... Yeah. The vodka, I think it was, wasn't it? It was some, yeah, some sort of weird thing. But yeah, yeah. so then we get into the drawing grace, Steph DeLander. Steph DeLander, yeah, is who's it... Matt Cardona's, like, friend. Yeah, Matt buddy. Cardona's had pec surgery, so he didn't... I think he was scheduled to appear, weren't he? It's like the... But Matt yeah. Cardona's just had pec surgery, so he's recovering. Shout out to him, hopefully it doesn't take too long and he's back, because he's had a hell of a ride since leaving WWE. He's the indie king. Yeah, I've really enjoyed mm-hmm. seeing clips and mini match like highlight videos of him. Yeah, him versus Blue Kane. Yeah, Blue Kane. The, again, this is again for like that for like Zaya Lee's just been released for um, Jinder Mahal's just been released as well. These yeah. are the kind of path you want to follow. The Matt Cardona, the Nick Nemeth, the Mustafa. Jinder Edwards. Mahal did it. He did it before, and he'll do it yeah. again. Yeah, I, don't he, hinder the Jinder. Yeah, I feel like he didn't. Yeah, he didn't get the high... Because he got released same time as Drew, didn't he? Yeah. And yeah. Drew kind of went on the whole rampage through the indies. It's because it was more in the UK, so we were more aware of it happening. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, that... We get into the Women's World Championship, the, the knockout, knockout Championship. Knockout championship. Yeah. yeah. Prior to that, Ash by Elegance gets a Yeah, she's in like a skybox. Yeah. Which... Mm. 
it's she quite hates funny. Tiffany Stratton, by the way, because Tiffany Stratton copies everything. Oh, okay. Because yeah. there's one somebody in AEW who's been interviewed recently saying, "What do you feel like about Tiffany Stratton being your double gang?" And she loves it. Yeah, some people love it. Yeah, but this Ash by Elegance doesn't. Yeah, it's. Well, whichever. Yeah, yeah, quite like that they showed her in the skybox, but they did that on SmackDown the night before, which I thought was a bit... Mm -hmm. They went to the skybox on SmackDown and damage control up there. That's the first thing I thought of when they did it on this. Everyone loves a skybox, don't they? Yeah, Yeah, so they both come out. Jordan Grace is in some like purple coat thing, look really cool. Yeah, that's cool. More celebrities. Yeah. I don't know any of them. There's something to do with they have a partnership with some NFL thing. And yeah. that bloke was there in his NFL jacket. That's what I got from it. It's probably yeah, all I needed. This was weird. This this match. Um, I don't, I don't know where to start. It yeah. starts off as a good showcase of the two women in the match. And I don't know if there's been a lot of interference in the build-up to this. Obviously, Matt Cardone has been on the mic a lot. It's been, from the video package I saw, there was a table bit. I actually I've seen that video. I've seen that video on YouTube. Part of the whole me quite like enjoying grace and going oh there's a clip oh there's a clip yeah youtube rabbit holes very good recently although they do just pull you with whatever you watched last i yeah yeah um, right so yeah yeah it starts off hot and heavy doesn't it it starts off with steph delander trying to um go all guns blazing on jordan grace but jordan grace counters it jordan grace is so athletic just she is so unreal. Steph Deland is really tall. I know Jordan Grace is quite small as well. This was a yeah. right mis- mismatch of sizes. Yeah, you are right. You get a dive straight away from Jordan Grace. Yeah. Which did look painful actually. She looks like she banged her head against the barrier. But once again that goes to the whole is it a bit too small the outside of the ring? Yeah, it's the quirk of TNA, isn't it? I'm sure they're they're quite used now to so banging their head into the barriers. Yeah. Yeah, but once again, it was like a kind of standard match, wasn't it? The bad guy focuses on the good guy, gets a good show in, beats him up multiple times. The, yeah, the crowd was really pumped for this. Mm-hmm. It was a proper let's go atmosphere, as I'd, I'd probably say. Like they were, as, even in the beginning phases of the match, they were like, yes, come on. You mm-hmm. can tell that people were well up for this. Yeah. Um, and there's a big boot from Steph which kind of keeps her in control. Yeah. Which, that was a, a good show. And they go into, uh, is this the, yeah, the bit of the sleeper hole, isn't it? Yeah. So Jordan goes for a few hole. sleeper holes, yeah. slows it down a little bit. Yeah. And then that's where really the match ends, in that kind of yeah. regards. Yeah, because the referee gets knocked out. Yeah, so there's a bit where the ref... The, who are the people at the ringside? I wish I could tell you. Some Steph's friends that aren't Matt. Steph's Cameron. friends, yeah. They're Matt, they, yeah. they were filling his role. Entourage. Yeah. Um, they slide the belt to her and try and distract the referee very poorly. And then the referee spots the hole. Oh, she's gone to hit. Wow. Jordan ducks and the referee nearly gets hit with the belt. Yeah. And next minute, the ref is hit with the belt. Or is yeah. hit. Yeah. It was like, what, what, yeah. It, yeah. It, it went zero to 100 real quick. And then one of the bad people that was with Steph Delander then... Takes the T-shirt off of the referee and then counts one, two. Lights go out, but you hear the three. Yeah, I didn't quite get the whole, I can take the T-shirt off the referee, now I'm the referee. Yeah. This isn't the I don't think it was. Yeah, I don't think it was. It was, I think they were just going into business for themselves, really. And then PCO comes out of nowhere. Have you seen much about PCO? PCO? Um, no, not really. Uh, no, but he's a crazy guy. So my questions with that is, has he been in the story up to this point? No, no. no. Maybe with the other two men. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because, yeah, so Jordan, then... Jordan Grace, yeah, he says knocked out, do that weird free count. PCO appears, and you're like, oh, cool. Okay. That's the interference done with. Yeah. I've just and generally thought they hadn't paid the... The light bill, bill here, light. or paid for the pay-per-view to go on for that long. Yeah. It's like, like back in the day. Yeah. yeah. And then somebody else comes out to deal with PCO. I take it that's who he's feuding with. Yes. 
I've not seen is this, much the, 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 as long as TNA we're getting the same feeling so. from this because obviously both yeah it, like I said this match just made no sense Steph Delanda tries to like flirt with PCO yeah like, that was weird that was shades of the late 90s weren't it yeah yeah it was it was yeah the PCO was like yeah I, I'm loving this and then he was like nope yeah it goes to choke and then tries to choke summer yeah bit of casual yeah yeah violence that big guy that come out and attacked PCO I'm sure he was in the Ascension in WWE. <laughs> if not, he's got the same haircut as him. Yeah. Yeah, he was... But then, huge... yeah, and then Jordan Grace is so tiny compared to yeah, him. Yeah, he's like the proper but, uh, small dog, yeah. not a big dog kind of thing. Yeah. And then this, I generally thought, right, so the lights cut, he gets her in some kind of weird hold, like to snap a neck. The lights go out, mm. and I generally thought that was going to be the finish. Yeah, is that the end? Yeah, so like, she'd what? like... Yeah, it's weird because she didn't lock a low blow and try to do like an airplane with it. Yeah. And then the other two get involved yeah. and kicks Jordan Grace. Yeah. And then that tall guy then decides to snap he just, the yeah, neck. He, just the ne- he snaps the neck. It made, the light goes like, off after. The light's too late. After, yeah. yeah. And, it's just, and then, yeah, I don't know. It generally made me think like they're actually killing Jordan Grace off. Like, yeah, is she going to WWE? Has her contract expired? Yeah, or has what, what's yeah. going on? Yeah. yeah, and then Dead Sammy Machine. Callahan, thumbs up, thumbs down. Yeah, I like Sammy Callahan. He's cool. Yeah, so he comes out with a bat or whatever it was, starts beating people up. Yeah, clears house, gets Steph back in the ring. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jordan Grace with a Jordan driver, and then the referee just runs out of I nowhere. Was a juggernaut driver? No, Jordan driver. Oh, okay. I was calling it yeah. Juggernaut Driver. Was oh, it Juggernaut Driver? Fans, you'll have to let us know. I feel like they showed a graphic, the tail of the tape before this match, and it said Juggernaut Driver. I'd class it as a Jordan Driver, but yeah, agree to disagree on that one. Yeah, Jordan Grace is still the champ. Yeah, I don't know how I feel. I feel like it was too I've... much. I feel yeah. like it, all, it overshadowed the actual women wrestling. This would be on the map yeah. if I was ranking it. Yeah. I, yeah, it was all right all to a point, and maybe the whole PCO interfering, and then but do that for the ending. But then the whole lights go out, nearly breaking a neck, dead machine coming out was a ball a bit weird. Yeah. It's a bit too yeah. much. All too much. Yeah. And then we are getting ready for the main event. Yeah, so this was... Bear in mind that the, I had this on the TV while I was doing bits around the living room, tidying up a little bit. Eating breakfast, mm-hmm. doing that this morning. I feel like this went really quick. It was about twenty minutes. I know. I just mean the whole show, the whole card went really. Oh, quick. the whole card. Yeah, 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 definitely. It. Yes, I know what you mean. It was like, was it a three-hour show? Yeah, I think maybe. Four yeah, four hour with. Show? It was no two hours. It was about three, three and a half hours with pre-show. Three and a half hours long, pre-show. but Chisels. all matches. Yeah, all matches were. It felt rushed. Yeah, it's a bit weird. I don't know how. If I don't know what I was expecting because in my head recently, WWE have done four matches in a pay per view. Obviously, you get to Mania and there was six and seven or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. One of my complaints with AEW pay per views is it feels like there's too many matches. It goes on for a bit too long. With this, it felt like there was too many matches, but they all went too quick. It's, or yeah. Something needed to be a bit longer. Yeah. We don't know what. We can't put up that sort of finger yeah, on it. Yeah, I just didn't get the feeling that I wanted from it kind of thing with it. This was like 20 I minutes. I was maybe, really maybe? looking forward to this pay-per-view after what Hard to Kill was. And yeah. The like reinvention of TNA and everything like that. Yeah, I feel like wrestling has been on such a high... And this was TNA's chance to be like, yes, we're on board in this bandwagon too. Yeah, we're on this bandwagon. Wrestling's cool again. Blah, yeah, blah, blah. and bits of it worked, bits of it didn't. Mm-hmm. Which might be a bit unfair on it. And Maybe we're being too critical, but... I just feel like... I mean, with wrestling, we get our own opinions, yeah, right? Yeah, I just feel like we've... I, I, I like how we both come to the same kind of conclusion as well. You're watching it and it feels like something's missing from the show. Yeah. Something's not quite hit the mark. This, this, so this is Moose v. Nick Nemeth for the TNA World Champion or World, World Title. Do they call it? Yeah. yeah. World Championship. Yeah. So there's a bit of a video package saying that Nick Nemeth needs to win a belt because he's not won one in 11 years. 
which I can't believe it's a world one. title. World title. Yeah. I feel mm-hmm. like he's been in the continental since then. Yeah, it'll be world title because yeah. I'm sure he won the IWGP United States Championship. Yeah, probably. From David Finley. But yeah, once again, this was a standard affair match, really, wasn't it? I f- will give Moose entrance of the night because I really liked his entrance. I thought he looked badass. Yeah. I haven't seen a great deal of Moose. You haven't, have you? Yeah, he's no, been around in TNA for years. Yeah. And I just said that you haven't obviously sent me enough clips. But yeah, his entrance was badass. I feel like TNA are up against it with entrances because of all they've got is the screen, a short ramp. And that's it. Yeah, right. that's yeah, what yeah. they've got, which is fair enough. They work with what they've got. They, what they do well. But obviously you've got, even take away WrestleMania or Rumble entrances, You've still got Raw and SmackDown have indoor pyro, bit of a sh- more of a show. AW. You're forgetting about AEW no, as well, yeah. Into AEW. Cool. I'm not. I can't put them all into the same box. People get angry. Yeah. Yeah. So Nick Nemeth's one is a bit of a, a bit of an example. They put his name up on the board, and he just comes out looking all rare, hyped up. Yeah, hyped up. And he's, it just feels like it's really short to the ring, and he's there, and that's it. Yeah. On to the next yeah. one. Which is ironic, considering both of us normally complain about how long Roman Reigns takes to get to the ring. Yes, it takes about 10 years, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so you get to this match. I was quite hyped to see it. This is the first match I've actually sat down and watched Nick Nemeth have since he's left WWE. Okay. I've seen clips. I've seen spots. I've not actually seen a full match. I've seen like a highlight package of a few. So this was what I was hyped for. I really liked Dolph Ziggler in WWE. He was, one of my top, yeah. Yeah, he was one of my top performers. I always look forward to his matches. Mm-hmm. I always got a smile on my face when I saw, yes, they brought him back on TV for even a match or two. When they yeah. brought him out, he was a solid worker. I imagine he was great at live events, at WWE Live or whatever you were seeing. House shows yeah. or whatever it was. Whatever house yeah. show you went to, I imagine he was one of the highlights every time. And then... Oh, I'm not going to say it was a bad match. It was a good match, but this kind of summed up the whole pay-per-view. Something was missing. Yeah, something was missing from this. Because like, they started off hot and the system get thrown out of the ringside. Yeah. Uh, that's all the highlights I got from it. Uh, oh, no, Moose did a nice sky-high move, which was like one of his like lift up and then yeah, like slam stuff Ziggler. But Dolph Ziggler doesn't have a bad match in him. No. I wouldn't say this was a bad match. I wouldn't say it was a good match either, but yeah, oh, it I'll was give, just like in the middle. I also want to give a shout out to Moose doing the Roman Reigns bout flip. Not as good as Roman Reigns does it, but he did the whole like, it's my belt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I'd love to see that. I don't know if he's done that before or if that's just something he's copying off Roman Reigns or Roman might be copying him for all I know, but it was cool. You never know with these people. Yeah. You get miss, miss, yeah, m- yeah. Moose beats down Nemeth. You get a super kick from Nemeth. Nemeth loves a good super kick. He's really good at super kicks as well. Yeah. The missile drop kick he did, that was good. Got some good air on that. I really liked his... So Nick Nemeth does like a standing elbow drop. Yeah. He does nine of them yeah, really in a row. Thing. Yeah. Moose rolls out of the ring and then Nick Nemeth then goes onto the apron and then jumps off and does his 10th elbow drop. Yeah, probably hurts him more than he hurt Moose. Definitely. Yeah. 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 It was the standard affair, really, right? I don't know. Do you have any sort of specific things that stood out? Yeah. The, the whole famous encounter, and it happened more than once, was cool. Mm. I like that. And then he hit a couple of famouses. I think he hit three famouses in total in the match. Yeah. And then Moose kicks out of That They made him look strong. Yeah. I was disappointed there was no zigzag. I don't know if he still does the zigzag. It's called the danger zone now. The danger zone. He doesn't yeah. even attempt it, does he? I was a bit disappointed at that. But is that him protecting that move? As all wrestlers should protect yeah, their finish. they should. Yeah, yeah, their uber finisher. If he's got the famous of it, obviously, is not as effective as he <laughs> on Especially on Moose. Yeah. yeah. No, like if, yeah, something was missing. It was a good, I'd say it was a good match. It wasn't a bad match. I was just surprised that Moose won clean with his yeah, that, nice yeah. evil spear. I don't know if that's because of what happens after the match. Is that why they did that? Potentially. I did like this spear. I alluded to earlier, but his spear, he does to win. 
And you don't like it, do you? Bobby Lashley does it. That's where Bobby Lashley got the spear from. It just looks weird. Like his like legs the little in the flip. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if Dolph jumped a little bit too early for it. Did I know what you mean. Something fell off. Mm-hmm. Also, mm-hmm. Nick's spear, spear was did look strange as well. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's just because of the size of Moose. Because Moose is huge. He is really tall, isn't he? They build him at six foot five, and I wouldn't be surprised if that's actually accurate. Yeah, um, he looks it. Looks normally, like you add on two inches, don't you, in wrestling? Might not quite be that, but he did look that big. Yeah, the elbow drop, drops did look good, especially yeah, the ones outside. It did make me smile. The camera actually broke this time when they knocked the lights off. Was that from the sky high? It was. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, no, it wasn't. No. So this is one thing I noticed. Obviously, yes, Moose won, but prior to him winning, he power bombs. Oh, that was um, it, yeah. Nick Nemeth onto the ramp, and then the screen goes green. Yeah, so the like... camera's right next to the lights, isn't it? There's the green lights, and I think mm-hmm. it's either caught a cable and ripped the cable out of the camera, or it's like broke, actually broke the camera. But the whole green did the whole little fuzzy. I thought it was a teaser to what was going to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like the QR codes yeah. we're getting. And then, yeah, eventually Moose wins the match clean. The system was celebrating. Yeah. And then we get the lights out segment where everything just goes all funky. You get like a weird video package. It wasn't really a video package, was it? Yeah, it was strange, wasn't it, that bit? I Mm -hmm. liked it. It was cool. Yeah, the screen goes all funky, lights out, and it's all, whoa, what's coming? Some of the crowd went straight away, didn't they? Yeah, some of the crowd. I think the crowd might have just seen Matt Hardy come out of... Yeah, before the lights. And then yeah. you, you heard his voice, didn't you? Which yeah, you cool. heard his little broken character laugh. Yeah. And broken Matt Hardy appears. Yeah. Whose contract has just expired, so he's a free agent. Yeah. And he does his whole delete jam with crowd love in it. I, I'm he, excited. That's where he made his name. Yeah, yeah. That's where he made that broken character, so yeah. I think it's a good move for him. Yeah, he picks up the belt, and then he, this is where I think it should have cut this camera feed a little bit earlier than it did. I think it should have cut mm-hmm. before he picked the belt up. In, in my yeah. eyes, but yeah, he carries on and he does some weird finger point, and then it stops. Yeah, which is, that was yeah. it. But that, I found that was a good ending. I didn't mind Moose winning clean. I don't think Dolph sticking around for TNA is, as far as I'm aware. I feel like going off and doing a bit more. He might come back to TNA. Looks like yeah. he's had fun. But then there. Matt Hardy could sign. Yeah, as well. Matt Hardy. Yeah, Matt Hardy. No one knows if he has signed or where he is yet, but he's at least mm-hmm. appearing for a while. It's a. Yeah. I feel like it's a good fit for everything I've learned about the system during this. It was like it broken, broken Matt Hardy's yeah. the one to come back and beat him up. Beat him up, yeah. Yeah. All in all, what would you give the pay-per-view? It's weird. I don't know. I don't know if it's just too fresh in my mind to like properly rank it. As I said earlier, is it going to make me tune into TNA this week? No. Which is a bit of a shame. We're, we're all on a bit of a high with the wrestling at the minute, so I would have liked that to have been the case. Yeah. I don't know how yeah. I would have fit it into a week, personally. Of wrestling, yeah. yeah. It's more than yeah. enough to watch. But there's definitely some people there that I'm like, I want to see more of. Yes, I agree. We'll definitely be tuning in for Under Siege when that happens, May 4th. It's on a Friday. So I think it's the Friday of... The bank holiday. Yeah, backlash, yeah. So you've got Friday, Friday, Saturday. It's Friday night. Yes, Saturday early morning for us. Very early morning. We've got backlash in France on the... Then and then you've got... That's it. That's the only lesson. Oh, no, we're at a thing on the Sunday. Non-wrestling stuff. Yeah. 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 So we've got to now try and squeeze in. The podcast for that one will be backlash, unfortunately, to TNA. Yes. But then we will eventually get to review Under Siege. Oh, 100%. Say review. We'll, at the minute, all we do is talk through them and go, yeah, we like that. No, we didn't like that. At some point, we'll get some rope analogies on the go, as we've tried to do today. That was quite cool of you, actually. I'll give you that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah. Let us know what you want us to rank as well. Yeah. It's not being stars. I hate star rankings for wrestling matches. That's why we're... Going to do it via ropes. Yeah. Do it via ropes. Yeah. Or do it via the ring. Yeah. So if we go through quickly, I would... Leon Slater, I want to see more of. I want to see more of Mr. Ali, but I like Mr. Ali. But that introduced me more to Jake something. So I'd be on the lookout for him. Yeah. Joe Hendry, yes, I want to see the videos. Do not want to see another match like that. Please don't do that to me. Um, yeah. 
I agree. Full Metal match wasn't a match the event. Eric Young and uh, Frankie Kazarian. Kazarian, Kazarian, yeah. Kazarian, however you say it. That was good. I'd like to see more of that. Definitely be on the lookout for that. Although I've already heard of both of them. Yeah. It's kind of like, now nah, it's nah, sticking in my mind. They are established, aren't they? So. Yeah, exactly, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, I want to see more of the two tag t- the system and the speedball mountain. That tag match yeah. that sold me on TNA tag matches. And then, yeah, well, the women's tag match as well was... Pretty good, to be fair. Yeah. And yeah, Josh Alexander, Hammerstone, I'll be on the lookout for that. Jordan Grace, it hasn't sold me on Steph Delander. No, I don't think it would have. No. I think she's more of the helping Matt Cardona keep his wins. Yeah, exactly. And then Moose was impressive. I thought that. I'd be interested to see what Nick Nemeth does now. Does he stick around in TNA or is he going off somewhere else for a bit? What's going to happen? Maybe come back round. I think that's the interesting thing about the wrestling business at the minute, especially on that circuit, is yeah. you don't know where anyone's going to end up at the minute. Yeah, like Broken Matt Hardy. Well, I was yeah. going to go back to say Matt Hardy. He could have re-signed with AEW, could have gone to WWE. He could have gone, well, he probably wouldn't have gone to New Japan. But at the minute, he's appeared on TNA. Yeah. Because if you look at WWE, just does releases, AEW does releases. Everyone's got stacked rosters as well. How does it work? How would they fit in? Yeah, how would you fit in? AEW at the minute have a bit of an injury crisis. If you look at their sick bench, you've got an entire roster for a TV show. Aye. So yeah. Is that what they do? They have a fourth TV show? They for fit. all the injured wrestlers. Yeah. You back. never know. Yeah. yeah, you never know. What do they do? Because they don't do house shows, do they, AEW? No, they've, they do a few, but not, not a lot. Yeah. They do, yeah, I don't know. Did they ever do house shows? They did one in just after the pandemic era oh. in Daly's Place in Jacksonville. So they don't just go around and do WWE Live does? No. Because they're wrestling six nights a week, aren't they? And they're doing yeah. potentially, I don't suppose they do it anymore, but they could have, one wrestler could be on eight times in a wing. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that was, it was a meh. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed I, it, I, but it was a bit meh. It was missing something. Yeah, it? definitely missing yeah. something. Rebellion haven't sold me on their weekly show. They've definitely kept me engaged enough to tune into Under Siege. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I see that. Yeah. If, if we weren't doing this podcast, so we would eventually get to it. I'd tune in for Under Siege. I would have tuned, I was tuning in for this because of how good Hard to Kill was. Yeah. Before we start the podcast. I kind of think. And yeah, well, hopefully you guys. Yeah, let us know what you thought. Yeah, let us know what you guys thought of rebellion obviously we don't want to be too negative on it it wasn't worthy of being negative and we will have some shows where we are just extremely negative but yeah you can listen to us where you get our podcasts from whether that's spotify rss apple Podcasts, amazon google wherever you get your podcasts from give us a listen if you do want to watch this in video format youtube will make a fan out of you don't forget to like and subscribe, hit that notification bell. And Aaron, what are our socials? So we are at Make a Fan of You, and we are on X, Instagram, TikTok, and yeah, it's the We'll Make a Fan Out of You podcast on YouTube and wherever you get your bits from. So thank you for listening to this week's, and with that, hit the music. Mm-hmm.